Ah, ah, dinky do me heart is a very, very good morning to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and it's just gone 20 minutes past 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And I thought what I'll do is I'll pop up and say hi to everybody and just see who's about for a bit of a chit chat. Excellent stuff. So there you are. Uh, George says he loved Peter Davison as Doctor Who. I have to back you up there, George. I was a big fan of Peter Davison as Doctor Who as well. And, of course, I loved him as Tristan in All Creatures Great and Small. Do you remember that one? That was an amazing one as well. So there you go. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. Of course, you're watching Scotty McClue. And we're live just for you saying Dinky do Sunday morning. Nothing gets past me, you see. And uh, I want to know what you're all up to. I remember the brothers in the 70s. Wow, George. That's amazing. That was a great series, the brothers. Yes, I remember that. They were businessmen. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue, hashtag Floatai, the first lord of the internet. And we're live just for you saying dinky do. Quick pop up. We'll not be that long, but uh, it's good to be with you, of course. And if anybody wants to call in, then you're very welcome to do so as well. And we can have a little bit of a chip chat. I'll just see that, uh, that the lines are open for you. Yes, everything seems to be fine there. And that's always rather good stuff. Tremendous. You can't beat it, I say. That's just the way it should be. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue, hashtag Floatie. First Lord of the Internet. Fireball XL5. I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe on Fireball XL5. Who remembers that? Tremendous stuff. Dinky do. Good morning, mate. Good morning, the big man. How lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, I say. Morning from Lewis. Yes, indeed. Always good to have you. The big man's debater. Oh, we like that. That is fantastic. And he's joining us here on the chat as well. There's the wonderful Robert. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Robert. Lovely to have you with us. Good result. Dinky do. Absolutely, Gerald. Hi, Scotty. Dinky do. And thank you to everybody who joined in last night's phone in. Tremendous stuff. So there we go. Uh, follow us as soon as you possibly can. Hello, says Lifestyle. Hello, Lifestyle. Scotland forever, says Lewis. Well, I mean, it's been around a long, long time, Lewis. So I don't see any need for change. So there you go. Wonderful stuff. That's it. We won't be discussing that, Luke. I don't think we tend not to go into individuals in any great depth, you know. Uh, so there we are. Hi, Scotty Dinky Doo. Hello, Kenny. How lovely to have you with us. And welcome to a random pop-up this morning just to say hi to every single one of you. Thank you very much indeed. Follow us as soon as you come on, guys. Get following. Very, very important. Subscribe to Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. You'll see it on your TikTok biography. There it's there. Scotty, how are you? Kareem, I am tremendous. We had uh, a great show last night. I had to edit a little bit because somebody had said something. Uh, so that was that. So we decided just to edit that out. I agree with the caller last night, Scotty. You do need to get back on the radio as soon as possible. No excuses. Well, I've never, ever, ever made any excuses. The only reason I'm not back on the radio is because we need a switched on programmer. So it's not up to me to get back on the radio. So I've never, ever made any excuses, Robert. I go back on the radio as soon as the phone rings. Hello from Felix Stowe. Oh, wow. We love you down in Felix Stowe. I was just looking at the map last night. I was looking at Harwich and I was looking at Great Yarmouth and all these places. And then here you are on from Felix Stowe. How amazing is that? Good one, Henry. Well done. Alan says, call Scotty now. Yes, absolutely. That was the number, Alan. Yes. But uh, don't confuse everybody. The number to call just now of course, is the one on the bottom of the screen. That's what we like. But uh, what I've done, I've uploaded onto TikTok last night's caller. So we'll upload them onto YouTube as well. Good morning from Sunny Straven. Have you got the sunshine on Straven? How fantastic. 
Uh, there's a pronouns guy says, what are your pronouns? Well, check the bio and you'll see it there. You should have already checked the bio. First thing you should do, pronoun guy, before you ask the question. We tend not to go in for pronouns because obviously they're divisive and they're old fashioned, but I've popped mine up on the bio anyway. Scotty, the storm will hit tonight. Everyone be safe. Do you reckon we're in for a biggie tonight? Do you think we've got calm before the storm at the moment, Kareem? And we're going to hit the biggie tonight. Uh, we shall see what is what, I say. How's the uh, picture looking on the YouTube? Is it all right? Fantastic stuff. And uh, So there you go. So pronouns, guys. Start to have a wee think about that. Up the jocks, wee man. Same to you, wee man. Lovely to hear from you, wee man. Um, wonderful. All these things happen in the fullness of time, Scotty. I hope they put you back on the radio because you've got all the attributes. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and I, mean, I agree with uh, with um, Robert there, but I mean, I've never, ever made any excuses. It's just getting the right platform. Hello, mate. Back again from Newcastle. How are you doing? How are you doing, Jonathan? We love you in Newcastle. Fantastic. Alice says, can you say hello to my son, Benjamin? He's a qualified first aider and has been nominated first aider of the year. Absolutely well done. Congratulations, Benjamin. That's wonderful stuff. We like that. Uh, I just dismantled the Wayne's trampoline. Uh, it blew away the other night, 90 miles per hour, coming around 3 p.m. today. Where is that, Tam? It blew away. Absolutely. Who's sending me beautiful red roses? I'll bet you it's Kareem. Let me just... Yes, Kareem, a very, very, very kind and generous contributor. And he's sending me lovely, lovely TikToks here, red roses and TikToks. Tremendous. There's Gareth and Wonky have just joined us. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Hello from Yorks. Hello, dinky-doo. We love it, Gareth. Dinky-doo, absolutely tight talk. John Damon has just sent me a lovely, lovely gift, a TikTok. Thank you very much. Just sat in a lovely chocolate cake sitting in the kitchen. Oh, I've done that before. I sat on my mother's sponges. She brought them out the oven and covered them up and then sat them in a wee tumble dryer. And I came in and plonked my great backside down. And I said, so what day have you had, mother? And she went, you've sat on my sponge. Anyway, I'd cubed them. They'd go right through the wire trays, so it was trifle for a week. Uh, there we go. What have we got? Dinky doodle. I hope you've had a fantastic Buns Night, so Scotty. Well, wonky pint, you'll see it on YouTube. We did Address to the Haggis, and we did, and you'll see it on TikTok as well. We did Address to the Haggis, and we played a nice wee tune of the time of Buns. And uh, so there we go. Hi, Scotty. Hello, John Damon. Thank you for your lovely gift. That was so kind of you. Uh, now, who have we got here? Follow us as soon as you come on, guys. Dinky do. Uh, Gareth is in the United States. He's from York in the United States. My phone's been funny. I'm not getting your notifications. Oh, wonky pipe. You need to recheck that. Put that back in. There we are. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you, Beef Drippings, for following. Guys, everybody should follow Scotty McClue if you've got a TikTok account. If you've got a YouTube account, you should be subscribing to the YouTube channel. Don't ever not subscribe. Otherwise, you won't get your notifications for the internet phone in. The biggest thing happening right now on the internet, Scotty McClue on the phone in. There we go. Now, what have we got? David says... Ah, David's an engineer, and he lines up gears. That is a great skill. I remember stripping a gearbox, and to get the gear in line, you've got to be very, very slick at what you do. So well done, you, David. Wonderful stuff. That's what we want. So thank you to engineer David. Now, who have we got? Can you do a front flip? I can. I'll not be doing it here, of course, because it's a bit trolley to ask that. That's what your wee trolls would normally ask because they're not able to hold a conversation. So they ask, could you do a front flip? Could you do a back flip? Did I see you crying in the supermarket? What are your pronouns? These sort of things. Very trolley stuff and we don't have any trolls on here. A lot of toast in the comments, absolutely. Uh, Scotty, can you say hello to my friend? He's hungover. 
Yes, come on, Ike. Get yourself sorted out, boy. I'll have to check and get on with it. What was for breakfast today? Oh, wonky pie. Breakfast was beautiful. Scrambled egg on toast. Outstanding. Scotty, I don't want to jinx it, but I've noticed maybe you have as well. You don't seem to get as many trolls as you used to. No, Robert, the trolls have, the words gone round the internet, never, ever, 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 ever troll Scotty McClue or you will get a lifetime ban and become toast immediately. So the trolls have spotted that. I could tell you that. Tam Saunders says he's in Nicky Nacky Newland. I had to pull Alex Belfield up for calling Scotland. Nicky Nicky Newland. So there you are. So I hope he is suitably uh, pulled up and chastised. There we are. Dinky do, I say. The swanee is going to be full. Absolutely, you rouse up. There will be some people going down the swanee. What you saying, Giza? Well, what you saying, Mac Pudi? You first, I say. Love your radio show. Thank you, Andrea. So good of you. I asked you ages ago if you could do a backflip and you said you used to do gymnastics. No, I took gymnastics for anger management and on the first night I flipped. Do you enjoy cheese and toast? I've got a craving for that. Yes, I do. Would you call it cheese and toast or roasted cheese? Some people say, would you like some roasted cheese? Roasting implies overdoing it. Uh, you know, but cheese and toast, very, very nice. Uh, there we go. Now, there are no trolls as everyone loves you, Scotty. Thank you, Donny. What a nice thing to say. Dinky do says Shario. Shario, dinky do to you, I say. Fantastic. Can you advise me, Scotty? Should I purchase a pair of. I don't know what these are, Robin. It's obviously some term. Encourage uh, everybody on here, it says. Scotty embarrasses the trolls. He turns them into toast. We do. We make them toast. And they go down the swanee. There we are. Uh, no listeners, says Tam. Tam, where are you getting that from? With uh, over 3,000 people listening this morning. So I wouldn't worry about that. So there you go. I'll just put that in uh, uh, to Tam there. And I'll just say to Tam... Um, over 3K this morning when we popped up the last time. So there you go, Tam. That'll teach you to come out with nonsense like that. There you are, Tam. That's you got your reply there. We like that. Wonderful. Wonky has uh, just sent us. So they're, um, they're used, the, the shoes that look like rats, very stylish, commonly used in theatre. When you say in theatre, Robin, do you mean in the entertainment theatre or the operating theatre? I mean, both theatres, you can come out in stitches. Uh, Scotty, where's we fat Bob now? We don't know, Tam. Nobody's heard a peep. Well, I certainly haven't, so there you are. Hi, Scotty and chat. So there you go, Tam. I hope you uh, realise that this is big. Now, uh, what have we got? No, Charlo, I've never owned these. I have to say, both Scotty. Ah, excellent. Mad Hatter's just joined us. A very warm welcome. Lovely to have you with us this Sunday morning. And what a great time to pop up. Lovely, lovely. Thank you very much. Now, what else have we got here? Um, oh, Scotty, how do you feel now that you are the first lord of the internet? It feels fantastic, Charlotte. You know, it's uh, it's just great stuff and everybody is loving it. Hashtag Floati, all uppercase, F-L-O-T-I, hashtag First Lord of the Internet. There we go. Scotty's one of my best friends. Oh, Scotty, sorry, one of my best friends has broken up with his girlfriend for many years. Can you offer a word of comfort? He's a bit down. Yes, you'll just have to walk through it and remember all the good times. And just give each other space. That's the thing. Who knows what the future might bring. 50th year anniversary, uh, says Scrag. Yes, you're right, Scrag. That is correct. Can you believe it? 50 years ago. I, I remember it as if it was yesterday. So there we go. 50 years ago. My goodness me. 
Thank you, do. Hashtag flow tie. Thank you, Donnie. Very, very much appreciated. And a big thank you do to you as well, of course. So there we go. Scotty, have you ever worn driving gloves? Yes. Yes, I've worn driving gloves, proper driving gloves. Uh, I used to uh, run a Jag, and I always put on my driving gloves at the wheel. Look, Gilpert, my palace here. Hello, Alfie. Dink you do to look, Gilpert. Pull Dallock Street. Yes, indeed. Uh, do Maria Knight and Geo Dog still pop in all the time, Wonky Pint? Lovely. We have them on all the time. It's just such a privilege. We are a TikTok community on here and new people joining us all the time. It's just beautiful, I say. I've got 1,400 likes already. We love both Maria and Geo Dog. I'm just winding you up, Lol. Of course you are, Tam. What a huge wind up. I'm laughing and laughing my head off. Tremendous stuff. There's somebody giving us a wee call there. Oh, that would have been quite good. They could come on and have a wee chat. Let's see. Ah. Hello, you're live on Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello? Oh. They're obviously not able to hold a conversation. But that was good that they rang. I like that. I'll tell you what that would be. Somebody ringing to see if it was genuine and the number was attached. They'd be trying it out. And then when they had me, they oh, panic. You know, it's real. But they should come on and have a chat. This is about, out of all your previous cars, which one do you regret selling? Well, I probably regret selling the 1952 Austin Somerset. I bought it for quite a high price. I paid £20 for it. And now it would be worth, I don't know, 4500 maybe. Something like that. Lovely big grey Austin Somerset. So there we go. Uh, and I used to quite fancy having a Rover P4. Wonderful. A lol, Tam, lol. So there we are. And uh, yes, here we go. Here we are. There's a wee reply to Tam, and I'll just put me too. Uh, lol. There we are. Fantastic. There you go. That's you got it now, Tam. And so that's probably one. Yes. Wow. If only you knew at the time. Scrag, I would like my dream job in academia is the reader and professor in hindsight at a leading university. That would be what I would like to do. Who is that calling? Hang on a minute. Hello, you're live in Scottish phone in. Who's that? Thank you there, Scotty. It's Kareem. Ah, oh, Kareem, what a privilege to hear you. Is this madness Hello. popping up on a Sunday totally unannounced? Yes, I was out walking the dogs. I got the notification. Isn't that fantastic, Kareem? Incredible. I just thought, yes. I'll, I thought I'll pop up and see who's about. Last night was an incredibly successful phone-in. Although, sadly, yes. I had to uh, had to edit it because somebody had said something inappropriate. Yes, and, but these things happen from time to time. And I don't think they realised they'd done it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I said, you but can't you know say now. that. And they said, oh, I've, I've said it. Yes. But you know? know now, and other people will know as well. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, obviously, I usually have my finger on the dump button, but that's a trusted caller, you know? Yes, yes. But, yeah, it won't happen again, Scott. I'm no. Sure no, I'm sure we're absolutely fine with it. There we go. And, uh, you know, so what's a wee bit of editing between friends? Listen, it's yes, lovely to uh, hear you. You were telling me last week about the dog and the vet had yes. said a touch of the arthritis. I, well, the thing is, Scotty, they, they didn't pull it out. They just said she's getting a little bit stiff. Yes. That happens because she's old age, that, you know. But of she's course. Fine, but um, she got her blood tested and everything's normal, so she's super fit. Ah, oh, she's absolutely fine. And listen... There's things that can be looked at tablet-wise nearer the time, if you know what I mean. Yes. You know, if you I'll think, no, she's really getting a bit stiff, you say, well, this stuff's definitely <laughs> eased her. Because both yeah. my Labradors, uh, Lord uh -huh. Reith, who made 13, 
And as you know, Lord Clyde made 14 and a half, and he had that embolism for 10 years. Oh, right. Okay. You know, so he walked like Douglas Bader. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Kareem, you know, fantastic. So there's all sorts of things out there, and I'm trying to think of the one. There's one that humans take a lot for, uh, you know, the rights of rheumatism and arthritis and things like that. Yes. I think I'll do a Google search just to see. Yes. Uh, just do my research, you know, just to see. What, and see what's, what's around there. natural stuff as well. You know, I would imagine omega-3 fish and all the rest of it. You need to check it's not too rich for them. Yeah. But, uh, but I've increased, sorry, I've increased their cod liver oil. Yes. So I'm, I'm waiting to see how that goes. Well, that's, that's your one. You're right on there. And there's all sorts of joint stuff that you can get as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She's fine. She's had a good walk there, um, and she's happy. And remember, Karim, you'll you'll probably notice it more in the winter when it's very uh -huh. cold and damp. Yes, yes. You know, and yeah. you'll notice she probably wags her tail when you give her uh, her back legs a good rub with the towel. Uh huh. She loves that in her lower back. <laughs> yes. So there'll be a bit of tail wagging there. Going, oh, that's lovely. Scotty, yesterday I took the dogs a walk down to a neck of the woods that you know well, uh, Greenock. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. There's not huge dog walking around there, but well done. Where did you go? Uh, do you know where the hospital is? You've got the reservoir across from it. Reservoir Road, yes, up the top there, Inverclyde Royal Hospital. Yes, there's a good bit there. Yeah, I, I've never been, so I wanted to see what that was like, and it was a great walk. Very did, windy, but great walk. Did you go round the <laughs> reservoir then? Can you walk round the reservoir? All the way around it, yes. It's Isn't that fantastic? Walk. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Superb, can you <laughs> such a beautiful part of the world? With the views, Scotty, on the Clyde, how oh. high up you are. Oh, oh. it's lovely. Up there, it's absolutely gorgeous. You'd be up near uh, the school, were you? Yes, yes. I, think, I think Clyde View was down around the corner a wee bit. That's right, that's right. So you're you're right up the top there, and the views are stunning. And of course, that's what I was used to seeing all my life. That's where I was brought up. Yeah, yeah. So you were you were you were a a, a, a minute or two from where I was brought up. <laughs> Gurok's lovely as well. Gurok's yes. really nice. Great wee place. It always was. What I used to do, Karim, as I've probably said to you before, when all the other boys went to play football after school, I rushed home on my bike, rushed, cycled down to uh, cycled down to the boats and went over with the yes. Liberty boats, you know, and I mean, it was just tremendous experience. Yeah. It looked like they had a nice few chuckies there as well. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's just, you know, it's just a lovely part of the world, you know. It's, and I'm just so sorry that uh, Thatcher ruined the economy. She did. She sucked the life out of it. Yeah. Well, I think, Scotty, we spoke about this before, but when I was driving there, I just see so much potential in the future. Yeah. Um, if, if things go our way with independence, I just, I think it's just... You know, the area will just transform. Yes, so and, and, and you see, everybody talks about Westminster ignores Scotland and has contempt for Scotland. Once Scotland really puts on the pressure about going independent, you'll see a different Westminster. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hope people don't fall for it, Scotty. Oh, I hope they don't fall for the lies and the promises and the nonsense this time. You know, I think they actually think, no, no, we will go our own way. And I mean, also for the ones that, um, you know, are, are very pro-monarchy, they need to yes. come round as well and realise that we'll be keeping the Queen and her heirs and successors. Absolutely. I think that, I, I don't think that's a question. And I'm once that message is to... very, very clear, I think yes. you'll see people get their act together. Yes. Uh, I think the monarchy is going nowhere. I think there's always a small minority that are against it, and that's what they'll be, a minority that won't. Yes, and they'll always be it. against it through a lack of knowledge and understanding. Yeah, yeah. You um, know, because they've been brought up to be against it, and they they are, 
you know, quite virulent in their yeah. in their style and all the rest of it, you know, and they need to get their act together and start modernising as well, you know. I was going to mention last night, Scotty, briefly, that I think um, maybe more and more people will see yes because, you know, April onwards, the gas and electricity will be going up. Yes. The tax, yes. tax is going up. I think I'm going to be an extra 30, 40 pounds a month now. You know, food is going up. I yeah, but Karim, can I tell you that the, that the power companies have paid out 200 billion pounds in dividends to shareholders? So, uh -huh. I mean, what, you know, what yeah. Scotland would be better doing is nationalising its power companies. And we, uh -huh. you know, we've got, we've got renewables, we've got oil, we've got gas. They've done away a bit with the coal now because, uh, you know, yeah. you used to have old coal gas and town gas and things like that. Uh, there, yes. There's Faze saying, you handsome Scott devil, isn't he kind? But, um, uh -huh. you know, Scotland, we should be just paying pennies for energy. We should be paying an admin charge to the company, and that's it. Uh -huh. The power should be next to, to, to nothing. So, I mean, what's happening is that is just a rip-off. Uh-huh. Well, I think there's an increase, a big increase in April, and there's there's one for October. Yeah. I know Norway, Norway just now, or one of the, the Scandinavian countries, whatever your bill will be for the, like for during the winter months, the government pays half of it, and I find that's that's something that should be looked at. Yeah, we up. should be, we should definitely be looking at that in this country, definitely without a shadow of doubt, because uh, you know it's becoming an essential. And once yep. you get uh, governments taxing the essentials, they are no longer working for the people. They're working for themselves and their friends. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's, that's the danger. The government were put there to work for the people. For the people. Well, Scotty, my concern is that you know a lot of the people that suffer in society, they get a lot of things paid for and help and grants and funds, etc., but what you're going to see April onwards is the working class, middle class people now going to be affected because it's going to eat into their budget. Yes. And when that happens, you're going to see a real downfall in society. Well, you'll know yourself when you get your salary in, very little of it goes to you. It all goes to everybody else. I, I think I'm over a thousand pounds that goes towards like tax and everything else yes. every month. Yes, you'll, you'll be, you're a third of your salary will go towards tax and a bit of pension and all that, national insurance, it's always uh -huh. high, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then you'll get a little bit back, and then that'll go to all the other people that have got their hand yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just worry about it, but upwards and onwards, Scotland. Upwards that's, that's and happened. onwards, but we need a caring Scotland, a Scotland where the government are genuinely there for the people. Yeah. They've been um, elected to do a job and they do it. And and I, I think that's what we've seen. You know, we've yeah. seen a lot of that uh, recently and uh, it's pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, Scott, I don't understand, Scotty, but a lot of people are angry in society, and so rightfully so. Yes. But a lot of the councils are having to do cutbacks yearly because of Westminster, but there's a lot of fighting now amongst people because things are getting cut, cut, cut. But to me, but this is what people voted to be a part of. You yes. voted to be part well, of Well, there Tory. must have been a huge number of people voted for the present government and allowed yeah. them to, to rip us, tear us out of Europe. Yeah. yeah. You know, so all well, these things. So, you know, the, the people are getting the finger pointed at them as well. And one of the uh -huh. reasons that I want the phone-in to succeed is because yes. it allows these people who are angry to come on and at least discuss it, and it might save them from going round the twist. Yeah, and it's good, good discussion, debate, and as you always say, you get educated on here and a lot of debate, so it's really... It's, Information, it's education and entertainment. Absolutely, absolutely, Scotty. Well, listen, I'm going to say thank you, do. Thank you, I enjoyed my chat. Oh, it's always uh, quality. I'm, I'm, always quality. And I'm so glad that uh, that you've seen the Reservoir Road there and everything. It's great. If you ever get a chance, Scotty, have a wee look at it. It's a lovely walk. It really is nice. Some, the views are stunning. 
I shall do that, Kareem. Very much appreciated. And thank you, do, sir. Have a good week. Speak next week. And bye, -bye. You, top man. There we are. That's our Kareem. What a great guy and what a fabulous caller. Uh, right, what do we got here, Dan? There are lots and lots of stuff. Um, thanks, Scotty. I appreciate that. There's more fish in the sea. Not a bad thing to be single again. Absolutely. Good evening, sir. Long live our gracious queen. Absolutely. Darren, do the Scots want to be independent? Shame if you do. No, John. There's absolutely zero shame in wanting to be independent. It's complete, 100% common sense thinking. So no shame ever. The Scots have been independent for thousands of years. The Union was a very, very badly put together blip with a lot of corruption. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just bad news. Uh, Tam says, Darren Ellis, we do not have a queen. Oh, we have a queen, Tam. Big style. Scotland are very big on its monarchy. It's effectively a Scottish institution. Her Majesty the Queen is 50% Scots. Her mother was 100% Scots. Her father's a direct descendant of Malcolm II. So there you have it. The next step uh, in the evolution of Scotland is independence, in my view. There'll always be opposition to it, sometimes from people who have no political ideals at all. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I saw a, a certain football club uh, downing the uh, the the leading the leading party now that's just ignorance yep they need to have a chat with scotty mcclure the yes camp's not split because of your snps and albert people regardless of the views of sturgeon or salmon will still vote yes they just disagree on the timing well there's never a reason robert as you know to disagree on the timing and my answer last week when somebody said we have got a pandemic why are they raising independence? You see, because independence is part of the cure. Yeah, it's part of the cure for economic ills. I also believe less governments, best government. Scotland has two governments. Listen to Scotty's views on tax. Absolutely. There we are. Why do we need two governments? Hi, Scotty. It's roast pork for lunch today. Yum, yum says Streaky Bacon. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing all the lives, guys. Thank you for coming on today. Floatai, the best broadcaster in Earth's atmosphere. You're very, very kind. I thank you. What's your job, says Alfie. My job is to inform, educate, and entertain Alfie. And beyond, says Eurasia. Yes, Good morning from Calder Crook, Scotty. We love you. David, lovely to have you with us from Calder Crooks. We love you as well. This is beautiful. What currency would Scotland use? Well, we could either use sterling or we could peg it to sterling or we could rejoin Europe and use the euro or we could use the pound Scots which had to be seriously devalued to facilitate economic union in 1707. So there's no problem with currencies, I can tell you. We'd probably peg it to sterling, to be quite honest, because we do do a lot of trade with England and Wales and Northern Ireland. Why do we get taxed on all our earnings and then taxed again on all our expenditure? And the council tax and the road tax and more. Because, Tam, it's people working out a way of how much money do you earn and how much can they get out of you. So there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Am I not right in thinking that VAT was brought in when we went into Europe? So it could probably be scrapped now. Things like that, you see. Thank you for sharing the live videos. Thank you for following can everybody on TikTok follow? Can everybody on uh, the YouTube subscribe? There we are. Fantastic. Get subscribing, guys. There's lots of videos for you. So I'm sending you all this quality stuff. It's not too much to ask to do a couple of clicks of your mouse and follow me. I'm a Cockney, but I've got a Scottish dad. It would be a shame if you went out of the Union. John, it would be a shame for Westminster, but it wouldn't be a shame for Scotland. 
It would be very good for Scotland. Scotland has been stripped and stripped and stripped as it stripped for, uh, uh, you know, all these years. When you think about it, 313 years of union. And it's never quite been right. It's always the old saying, Scotland is in bed with an elephant. Although we like elephants, I have to say. And there's nothing anti-English at all about Scottish independence. It's purely economic. And uh, there's a bit of politics as well, but I'm not a political animal, as everybody knows. Streaky says, do you have a wife and kids, Scotty? Streaky, don't be ridiculous. Who would have me? There we are. Fantastic. Uh, so I have to pay everything myself. I can't put the missus out to work. Follow us as soon as you can, guys. The pound existed in Scotland prior to the Union. Of course it did. Bob's beard. The pound was massive. As I say, we had to seriously devalue the Scottish economy, even in deep recession, so that it uh, would facilitate union with England. So there we go. And we would get that back. Fantastic. Of course we do, Tam says Darren. Follow us, guys, as soon as you possibly can. Wonderful stuff. Yes, I mean, the union's just been a blip. It was jiggery-pokery with Queen Anne, who was a Stuart, and it was all to do with not wanting Charles Edward Stuart on the throne. But America wanted Charles Edward Stuart on the throne. Fantastic stuff. It really is, guys. Amazing. Feel free to give us a call. The phone lines are open, guys. If anybody wants to come on for a wee chat, we just have the wonderful Kareem on there. Tremendous collar. There we go. Scotty, if the Queen died, we prefer Charles or William as King. It's not a matter of preference, David. Uh, you know, if the Queen died, Charles would be the King. And uh, it's as simple as that. He is the heir to the throne. Scotland benefited very well out of the Union. No, Robert, not really. The Union's history, the Union's sentimental. Do you trust the Union? No. Boris Johnson's not making a good case for staying together because there is no case for staying together. Staying together in the Union is put out by Westminster. Better together. We're all in it together. We're all in it. That's not what Scotland's economy is reflecting. It's been asset stripped for 300 years. What about all the oil? You know, 300 billion pounds or whatever it is. Crazy stuff. So that's what's going on there. So is she going to move up here? Why is she living down south if she's a Scottish queen? Because the crowns united in 1603 and then the king moved down to London. So James the sixth of Scotland, James the first of England, moved down to London, and they've made that the base for the monarchy ever since. They are admin headquarters of the UK. So the crowns, the headquarters of the crowns. And then in the early 1700s, the monarch became the monarch of Britain. Yes? Then there was the Act of Secession of 1701. So there's all that sort of thing. But uh, the reason she's down south, she's got a Scottish home. In fact, she's got seven royal homes in uh, in Scotland. A lot of them needing done up. I think we should get reparation of damages for Linlithgow Palace. But the Queen's uh, Scottish home is Holyrood House, Holyrood Palace, but it's called Holyrood House, really. And then she has, of course, her own, the monarch's Scottish home, Balmoral. So she lives up there for a good bit of the year as well. And um, there's several other royal residences in Scotland. There's a palace within Edinburgh Castle. So there we go. And as I say, Linlithgow Palace could be done up. That would be quite good. And uh, there's quite a lot of castles and stuff could do with a bit more uh, than a hoovering up. Uh, Scotland said no. Well, Scotland only said no in 2014 by the skin of the teeth because Scotland were lied and fibbed to, particularly the pensioners. So that was that. But when you say they said no, that's way, 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 way out of date. Brexit has put the kibosh on that. So I think the next time Scotland will say yes. 
Yes, they should do. The Queen should move to Avonbridge. Avonbridge is nice. Yes, yes, she'd like that, I would think. We've got a few castles out that way as well. What have we got here? You're live in Scottish for an in. Who's that? Hey there, Scotty. It's Daniel Warren here. How you doing? Daniel, lovely to have you with us. And dinky-doo, I love your basso profundo voice. Thank you very much, sir. I'm just wondering. I've, I've been watching you for the first time, actually. Ah. What do you think our stance would be on the EU letting us back in once we eventually are freed? I would think, Daniel, they would be beside themselves with joy if we wanted to come back in. Because yeah. the way to have really got a deal was not to have left the EU, but to have said, we will remain if A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are met. Indeed. And we would have got an absolute heck of a deal, a deal to die with joy for. And now, of course, what Brexit has actually done is facilitated economic annihilation because we'll be told we're paying for it, we're paying for the um, 400 billion pounds of the pandemic, 250 billion of that's purely Brexit wasted, you know? And to bring, um, you know, all these people, 510 million people in 52 countries kicking and screaming out of a union they've been part of for 50 years. It's horrendous. You know, I mean, 70 million people have been stripped of EU citizenship. It's so expensive now to, to, to trade yes. with Europe. And we're yes. never going to get trade deals. See, we were sitting at the big table, and along with yeah. our dear friends and allies, Germany, uh, we controlled 30% of the whole market. So you can really, you can really call the shots. Do you know what I mean? And we should be calling the shots, as, yes. as you said. We, we, we've been leaders in many things over the years, and and we should still be leaders right now. We're but still a world led. power. We're, we're still we're being a world power. By our we're sorry. Say again, Daniel. We're being led by what's none more than a. A wig down in, in London. Yes, I mean that's cool. exactly that's exactly what's going on. And um, you know, Thatcher has asset stripped Scotland in particular. Where are the shipyards? Where are the car the car companies? Yeah, she didn't do it any 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 good at all. You know, it's 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 all that sort of thing. And I think that all this, oh, we're better together. We are better together from Westminster's point of view because they can continue to asset strip. Yeah. There's a lot of scaremongering that's going on. There. Yes. That, that needs to stop. And the facts need to come out, Daniel. They need to. The, the, the people of Scotland, the people of England need to know exactly what's going on. Yes, and they also need country. to know that we subsidise Westminster to the tune of £75 billion pounds a year. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, it, it's... If, if you didn't stay in Scotland, it would be quite funny. Oh, yes, it would, be, it would be here. hilarious. But as you know, you've actually... Um, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm not good to say you're a spring chicken, but you will have witnessed the suffering that's gone on across Scotland as these industries have been removed. Yeah. And they have yeah. been removed. It's all political. Where's the sugar industry gone? They've even taken our biscuits away from us. Yes, yes. You see, all of that just moving down south. And I can remember talking to a guy that was... Um, a refinery in Greenock or a refinery down south could be closed. And he said, well, I'll tell you which one it will be right now, Scotty. You know, so so they, they need to get, I mean, there's no point in giving us promises because we'd be better governing ourselves because we know what we're doing. Yeah, and I completely agree that there's no anti-English. no going on. There's nothing like that. I adore England. I, I, I worked in England for years and years. Yeah. It's simply the fact that we want, we need 
to be a country of our own. We really don't need to England intervention anymore. Self government. Uh, well, uh, Westminster's uh, intervention, not not England. I mean, just self governance. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's all we're asking. Our own corporate and economic governance. Unfortunately, I don't think they'll let us go in inverted commas they won't. until the, the the oil is completely sucked dry of us, yeah. and they can they they've fallen out of love with everything we have. Yes, absolutely. But having said that, we are still the larder of the country. We are still the whiskey industry. We are renewables, you know. Our renewables are going through the roof at the moment. Yes. The, the, the winds and the storms that are happening. Oh, there would be a lot of power created. I mean, we should be getting power for nothing. We should not be part of buying gas in. We've mm. got gas in our North Sea. We do. We're finding new pockets of it. We're, we're looking at new carbon capture. We have renewables. We have uh, so much going on here. And like the, the previous caller said, Scott, we shouldn't be having to pay these price hikes up here. No. We shouldn't really be paying, like you just said, no. for any electricity or gas. No. Administration fees stuff. for a nationalized provider. But why, why should we be giving most of our salary to a power company uh, who are maybe giving away two hundred billion pounds in uh, in in um, dividends to their shareholders? Two hundred billion. It's just it really is. So I think we should be saying the government should be saying to the power companies, guys, I'm afraid you're going to have to take one for the team here. There shouldn't be any increase at all. I think it was on Friday evening I was watching the, the STV news and they, they were mentioning if Russia does invade Ukraine and uh, possibly Belarus, the problems that would occur from that is that our gas prices would go up because oh, we buy gas. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's why we need to have other arrangements that say, no, no, we get our gas directly from the North Sea, North Sea gas. Yeah. We, we have done for years and years and years so we shouldn't now be having to go cap in hand to Russia to say, please, can we have some gas, sir? They're stealing from Peter to, to pay Paul. As, Robbing as they, Peter they, to pay Paul. Daniel, do you know where that one comes from? I don't know. No, uh, you'll love this one because I can tell you're a, you're a man of great wisdom. Um, Thank you. When Christopher Wren was rebuilding St. Paul's Cathedral after the Great Fire of London, um, he needed a little bit more land, uh, you know, and so they decided they could get some from Westminster Abbey. Now, Westminster Abbey's real title uh, pre-Reformation was St. Peter's Church. So they took some land from St. Peter and put it on to St. Paul. So they dropped Peter to pay Paul. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll check it out, but that was the one I heard. And I, I, I do love to hear the origins of these things. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like I said, every day is a school day. Every day is a school day. Daniel, it's been a privilege to talk to you, sir, and thank you for your call. I really, really have thoroughly enjoyed talking with you. Thank you for your time, sir. And we'll hear from you again, hopefully. Bless you. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. And dinky do. <laughs> That's our Daniel, first time caller. Fascinating. Lovely chat. There we are. Just shows you guys. It's always worth a pop up, isn't it? Fantastic. Good day, Sir Scotty. Geodog. Somebody was just asking, Wonky Pint said, Do Geodog and Maria still come on? And here we are. Is that not just beautiful? I absolutely love it. Fantastic. Uh, Scotty, excellent show today. Really loved it. Thank you. Not at all, Kareem. Uh, big cooker on our doorstep. We shouldn't pay. Scotty, if Scotland want independence and there was a war, where would Scotland stand? Well, that would be up to who was at war and whether Scotland had any obligation or any requirement to be part of that. But I would guess that Scotland would rather not have any more wars because we've done a terrific amount of fighting over the years right up to 
my father's generation and beyond. Right, my dears, um, I'm going to push off now. It's been an absolute privilege being with you today. I've got four and a half thousand likes. I have loved every second of it. And uh, I'm so glad we came on for the phone in as well. It's just been a belter. So there we are. Globalization hasn't economically benefited most countries. Well, it won't link to you, because somebody's just off with the cream. I believe some countries have outsourced their pure trademark goods for items of cheaper value. Cultural craftsmanship has become a lost art in many countries due to cheaper labor. Yes, indeed. And uh, why is it so important to be in the EU? Because it's a massive market that gives you clout at the big table. That's why it's so important. Brexit was a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful error of judgment. But we'll see how it pans out. I think it will lead to uh, economic annihilation and political fragmentation of the United Kingdom. Mark my words. Scotty McClure saying thank you and dinky do to every single one of you. Ta-ra, How beautiful has today been just...